I'm so sorry, Levi. But I think God is calling me away from a relationship. No, man. No. This couldn't be happening. You were it. And now you're just going to leave? There was so much more to that text, but that's all you need to know. In the back of my mind, I knew it was coming. Every time I get close to a girl, in my mind I feel I never measure up. I pull my heart out time and time again for it to mean nothing. I sat in my room pondering the message for, for a long time. That's all it was, me pondering a message. In a brief moment, I even got angry with God. I caught myself saying, well, here you go again. You don't care about me. But I quickly caught myself remembering not to let a momentary feeling overshadow my life song. I stayed behind that night while my mom and my sister got supper. I totally lost my appetite. Instead, I went for a four-mile run. I even got home around 8 o'clock, and as soon as I got home, I just wanted to go to bed. It seemed like sleep was the only place I could escape. Each day, it just seemed like it got worse. I caught myself deep sighing all the time, and that's something so feminine. Well, maybe not feminine, but it's not me. I would just turn around, think about her, and... <sighs> all the time I know I said the last breakup was the most excruciating I had ever endured but it was nothing in comparison to this one not only did she haunt me during the day but I'd go to sleep and have dreams about her I remember keeping track with all the dreams I had and I believe I had about 10 and I'd wake up with optimism saying oh well this is this is gonna work out i put in context to that one message thinking that what i was putting there what pieces i were putting there were gonna work out and i was very optimistic that it would because i'm an optimist <laughs> i had dreams such as they were weird and and I've st I even went as far as to study dreams and w interpretations of dreams to see what they meant. Like one, I was at her house and we ended up wearing. It was an actual. Sh it's an actual shirt I have. It's something from American Eagle. It's a, it's a black T-shirt. She was wearing it too. Like we were both wearing the shirt. And I said something along the lines of, I I got in contact with your mom in advance so I'd know what to wear. See, it's it's weird stuff like that. There was one where we, we were doing a Disney ballad together, <laughs> like a totally original song, but it kind of sounded like uh, something from Beauty and the Beast. But, but yeah, I had a lot of dreams about her, and I, and I always wrote them down as soon as I had them. It was very haunting, and I don't think I've ever been that sad in my life for such a long time. Consider me weird or delusional all you want, but she was so important to me. When she left, I took it as a, we'll pick it up later kind of thing. I cling so much to secular music, from the 90s to be specific. And for future reference, don't do that. <laughs> it's, it's gonna affect with you real bad. I listen to songs such as Save the Best for Last by Vanessa Williams. Cause how could you give your love to someone else and share your dreams with me? Sometimes the It 
It's Gonna Be Me by NSYNC. So just tell me to think of it i actually listen to a lot of boy bands more so than i if you know me you know i'm a i'm a sucker for a boy band i think they're very talented you know good voices uh well that's pretty much it for good music so yeah i i just think it's pretty <laughs> above all so uh there was one song in particular, though, I came across. It's called Shadow by Sam Sue. And it goes something like... With nothing left of you to remind me So why are you still standing behind me? I'm trying not to forget you, but my... kind of a on, on purpose kind of song it's like this person left but they knew they weren't leaving everything so in my mind I was like oh she's just got to come back because she did this and that's not leaving out that she con she was in contact with me every month this year at least once a month I got a text asking how I was doing and just to catch up kind of thing and I always try to make the most of it because she meant so much to me. Very seldom do I come across a girl who is so passionately on fire for God. And you know, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I I can't just go out and be with any old girl. I have to have someone who upholds the standards that Jesus has told me to uphold. You know, my problems were lust, you know, predominantly of women. I just always want something. If I were to just date the first woman I found to be attractive per se, then I'd be totally reliant on that, which is terrible. And I see that every day. I see people getting with people just based on how they look. Let me tell you something. You're going to get nowhere doing that. Being reliant on someone's traits are bad, for lack of a better term. Love Jesus first, my friend. You love him, and he'll place the right person in your life. But you're never going to get anywhere if you don't. God is love. So I put all these pieces together, and I, and I built up in my head this infallible and perfect human being. Who wasn't Jesus? And that's a problem. Why did I do it? Because I wanted this girl so bad. And I thought, it's what God wants from me. Music definitely played a big part of my year. For the most part, it was secular music. And I strayed far, far away from Christian music. It really got on my nerves. Not really like not really the content lyric wise, but it all started to sound the same. It was terrible. It was awful. And so it turned me away and secular music. Oh man, I I used to love the song all the time. And you know, it was it was stuff like that. So I just wanted to stick with secular music for a while. 
st- stuff I already knew and and I definitely see that I definitely see that music is the devil's forte. Biblically you'll learn that that was his specialty. I believe he was up in heaven leading bands or whatever he was doing, but music was a specialty and I could definitely see that because the more I got of secular music, the more I wanted and the more I wanted to stray away from uh, gospel music or whatever, which isn't a bad thing per se. Like listen to Hit Me Baby One More Time All You Want. I mean, that that's fine. But, but don't let something consume you when you're in a bad state. I was in an awful state. Whether I realized it or not, and trust me, I realized it. But like the prodigal son, I was just getting dirtier and dirtier. I was rolling around in the mud. Looking back on it, God sure was fighting for me. Through the music... I came across this artist named Ronnie Freeman who was an absolutely convicting album called God Speaking. And there was one song that really got got me. It's called Sober Me. Can't deny the consequence of sin Sober me At the end of the day, all I really yearned for was for all the garb in my life to be rid of. I'd look up at the end of the day and just be so ashamed of myself. And every time I'm ashamed, I always remember what my old youth pastor used to say. Don't be ashamed. Shame's of the devil. But man, I couldn't help it. And I think it's something I'm always going to struggle with, as any human being would. You know, I really like to see any valley that I face as God being mama bird and me being the baby bird. God's like, okay, it's time for you to leave the nest and go out on your own. Or let me rephrase that. It's time for you to learn to fly. So I'm either going to fly or I'm going to fall flat. The only way I can fly is if God's flapping my wings and I'm going to fall flat if I try to do it myself. So, trust me when I say, I try to flap my own wings, and I fell flat, and I got dirty. And that song, Sober Me, really got to my heart, and it still it still gives me chills. Later on in the song, it says, Desire crouches at my door, but I've never heard him roar. Golly, Bill, it's giving me chills right now. Jeremiah... 17.9 says, The heart is the most deceitful and it is wicked. Who can trust it? Don't follow your hearts, kiddos. Follow God. Follow what he has for you. I assure you it's much better. But obviously you can see my problem was I was pursuing Christian girl. So I was like, oh, it's God's plan for me. I just gotta hang on. Don't be deceived, my friends, as I was. Something on the surface sometimes isn't what it seems. All because we can put something there that isn't there. Like I said, I was building up this infallible, perfect human being that wasn't Jesus. That is a problem. So, fast forward about... uh, August, we were planning to go on a vacation to Destin, Florida. I was happy that I was getting away for a little bit, but I wasn't as, I didn't really care that it was the beach. At this point, I was living a 
a lukewarm lifestyle, perhaps, you could say. I, I didn't really care, but in a sense, I did care. I, I was just drifting, riding a fence. It's the beach, man. Come on. You've never been. Enjoy yourself. And don't let this girl get to you. If only I could listen to such advice. So, right as I'm packing, I go to check my phone. And I receive one of the strangest messages that I think I've ever received. And quite possibly will always be the strangest yet the coolest message that I will ever receive.